Hello and welcome to the Billisol Family Farms YouTube channel. I've been gone a while. We took a little bit of a vacation and so I'm finally getting back to you guys. I really wanted to make another video and talk to you today a little bit about some of the products that we've been using over the summer. We've been producing so much, it's crazy. And we, we sell out every weekend. It's been so wonderful seeing our community enjoy the fruits of our labor. As you can probably see behind me, we're just packing some weight still. It's the end of August and uh, usually things want to slow down by now, but uh, the bees and our soil and the weather has just really promoted a lot of growth here in the greenhouse. So we're having a really good year. It's been really awesome to share that. I give away tomatoes to literally anybody I can. Our cucumbers have been doing really well. The pickling cucumbers started to slow down and we had crazy growth while I was on vacation and they got so entangled. I wanted some space for my slicing so we took those down but they were still very productive but just grew way too much in the three weeks that I was gone. So it's been a little bit nice not having that. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the products that we've been using here at the greenhouse at the farm all summer long. And not just this summer, but over my, all my years of growing. And I really wanted to share them with you because I think that no matter who you are, no matter how you garden, some of these uh, things could be beneficial to you. I'm very grateful that if there's something on discount or damaged over at Build a Soil, I get to snag it, try it out, find some of the things that I really love. I ran a, a, a grow here in Colorado a few years back. We had 40 moms and we took 1,500 clones every three to four weeks. It was really cool because I'd get to come home, talk to Jeremy, kind of tell him what's going on, test out different products and find what I really loved and ended up trusting in the end. So that's, so not only are these like some of the top selling products over at Build a Soil, they're the ones that work. So I, I think that you could find, they can be cost effective too, because I've had, with the Build a Soil way of growing, living organic, no-till soil, you're building your soil all the time. It gets better and better every year. So I actually don't have to use many of these things more than once or twice during the growing season. I've got here Thermex. So I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about it over the years. It has been my go-to product for emulsification. So I've always used this. It's been like the one thing that I've always used. I have this big five gallon bucket because I know I'm going to use it all the time. I'm sorry, that's not five gallon, but whatever it is. If you don't know what Thermex is, it comes from the yucca plant. It's a saponin product. It's basically an, a soap. And so you can use it to coat aphids, you can use it to emulsify products when you're mixing different ingredients together, and you can use it to help retain moisture in your soil. It's very soapy. So this year, here I think the beginning of the end of last season, we got this product from Growing Organic. It's also a wetting agent. It's a soapy type of product. It's basically all I use now in my greenhouse for IPM. So when I'm going out to attack some aphids, this just does such an amazing job. It's all natural, pretty awesome. AJ down at Growing Organic, I got to see him today. So if you guys stay tuned, we're gonna get together and show you how we make, how he makes the jadam. On the back of every bottle is a recipe and you can make it yourself. I have never attempted to do that, but as you guys know, we did the ferment recently, so I thought it'd be really fun to get together with AJ. So I'm gonna learn and you're gonna learn, it's pretty cool. The other product we've been using this, this season is the Kiwaha. Uh, J Plant Speaker, great product here. It's super water soluble, really soapy. So if you're filling up anything, uh, you better watch it. It's just like bubbles going everywhere. But in my uh, seedling stage of the season, during transplanting and up potting all the plants you see here in the greenhouse, uh, this was my go-to for retaining moisture in such little cells. You don't need much of it. So it was really, really awesome to be able to use it and see how well it works. Let me get into root wise because this since i was running the grow this is my absolute favorite product not only is kevin like a really good friend of ours he's a great person a lot of passion for growing i've used this product so many times it's like there's no other microbial product that i would ever use i have and never ever have i seen results like i do when i use root wise so when i plant my seeds at the beginning of the year whether they're going to the market in the greenhouse whatever as soon as they sprout i'm throwing on some root wise it's like the first thing i do if i up pot i use root wise as soon as we transplant i i use root wise 
And so most of the time I'm just dipping whatever I'm transplanting in that and then moving it along. On our Instagram, I posted recently a couple pictures of some lettuce heads that were going out in the field with the most beautiful, amazing, healthy roots. And so what this product does is really gonna help the roots take up the nutrients that are coming from the soil. And so I, it just enables that plant to be so much healthier and the root to soil connection is there. So I love this product. Between the RootWise and the aloe, major go-to products um, from the beginning of the season. I don't use them as much later in the season, but in the beginning, this, this is where it's at. When I was running the grow, I would soak all my clones, eight hours, 224, depending on my schedule. Man, I never did, if, if any of the plants were like not happy, I could put them in aloe and the next day come in and they were all praying so beautifully. I see instant results with this aloe and aloe is my top foliar spray product. I actually don't use it in the soil like most people do. Um, I'm always foliar spraying my aloe. So I really love this product. EM5, uh, this is a build a soil product. It's one of my favorites. Between the EM5 and the Jadam, I go back and forth for my IPM. Sometimes I just mix them together. I do whatever it takes, but um, I've seen powdery mildew before be totally eradicated with this. It did wonders. So I absolutely really love the, the EM5. I foliar spray this one. It just mixes in with your water so well. Uh, has a really great smell. There's lots of essential oils. It does just a really good job. So I'll be rotating products and this is one of them. So let, just real quick, I wanna talk about like my main nitrogen sources. So these are also really good friends of ours. The owners down there at Colorado Worm Company, Jen and Alex, they're so great. Really kind hearted people. They work really hard to bring you top quality worm castings. So as soon as I transplant anything into the greenhouse or out in the field, it gets a nice big handful of worm castings and uh, they have that immediate nitrogen source once the roots start to explore where they're at. This is another nitrogen source between the Thrive N Bloom. I use just Thrive N, not their Bloom formula for a really long time um, for nitrogen. Loved it. I, I've said this before, but what I love is products that give you immediate results. And so if I can come in the next day, next two, three days and see results, I just like am in love with whatever product that is. So Thrive and Bloom is a really great product. This is on buildasoil.com. This one, I just started using this year. I'm pretty lucky to have a decent amount that I don't exactly know how I ended up with it, but I'm really glad I did. I get a lot of products from Build the Soil and sometimes it's like a special treat because it's something that we wouldn't want to spend money on. And so I want to use it, but I don't. So whenever I get the chance, I'm pretty excited. We mix a really strong dose in the Chapin and then we walk down the aisles and feed it in. It's wonderful. I see immediate results from this as well. The Build a Bloom in itself. And then um, I use, I've been using this Pure Protein Dry for just years. This bag I've probably had over a year now. Some of you might think that some of these things are really expensive, but when you've built your soil or you are building your soil or you've got soil from build a soil or however you've done it. Once your soil's healthy, you know that you don't need much. So I feed on a very minimal basis according to what the plants are telling me. Some people are a little more particular and that's, that's fine. But I think when you have really good healthy soil, you don't need much. The last thing I wanna talk about here is the hemp extract. This is from Miles. And as you guys know, we did the ferment. Right before we went on vacation, I fed the ferment to the greenhouse and outside. And then whatever I had left, I put in my compost pile, like he said. And I've definitely noticed a, a difference in the breakdown and the size of the pile. So that's kind of cool. But one thing I wanted to talk about real quick is the amount of growth that we had while we were gone. It was pretty insane. Some of the suckers that were coming off the plants were just as big as the actual plant. So it was really cool. It was a total jungle and I'm still trying to prune uh, from that and we've been back a month. So it, it's really cool to see growth that I really haven't seen before in such short periods of time. It was insane, but we, we took a video of some of the cherry tomatoes uh, and the amount of growth that they had. So like I said, I fed the ferment right before we left. I got to the pruning about three weeks after that point and this is what it looked like. It was, it was insane. I had to go plant by plant, but I did. I got everything pruned up and looking really good. So. As you can see, it looks really crazy, but this is normally how it would look. This is our 
Sakura cherry tomato. This one's at the front of the row. You know, while we're on here real quick, one of the things I notice people talk about all the time is some of their, their lower growth. So, right, some people kind of freak out when they start to see maybe some of their lower leaves looking a little bit weird. That's a really normal thing. The energy wants to go to the top of the plant. And you're here, especially at Build a Soil Family Farms, the way that we grow, we're always trying to push growth upward, not downward. So it's very normal to see some wilty, maybe brown leaves on the bottom. If my whole plant was looking brown and crispy or, or like this, I would definitely have some concerns. And then like, I would go to some of my go-to products, probably aloe, maybe give worm castings. Um, I would try a few different things over the, the week. But in the end, if I couldn't figure it out, I would end up taking it down. I wouldn't want something to happen to the rest of my grow. If a whole row was looking crazy, then I would definitely have some major concerns and start addressing my soil, maybe do a soil test. But um, everything in the greenhouse here grows really, really well. And I'm grateful for that. One thing I wanted to talk about, we'll do it real quickly. I know we went over cucumbers before. I haven't done an official video on uh, tomato plants, but as you can see, we've been clipping it all the way up to the top. We dropped the string so you can see our stalk is kind of actually, all, it's planted all the way back there. It's okay when your plants are, like I said, if you have a few leaves on the bottom, take them off if you don't like the way they look. I'm definitely somebody who would like to come through and prune. I can just go ahead real quick, snip them off. With tomatoes here, you can always go to your fruit. So I could technically prune this one all the way up to here. We have our main stem. We have a leaf, which is what I've been cutting off. And then we have the sucker. So as you can see this, we have one here. I've got one here, one here, and then I've got a pretty major one right here. I'm just clipping my main stem, so I like to take these suckers off. This promotes top growth. We don't want those. This is basically gonna grow just another tomato plant. And, and as I said, we want all our energy going up that way. So I just get rid of them. Oh no, I almost cut my string. It's kind of like twofold. I'll go through and do this and prune them and clip them all up. And all it is is promoting top growth. So then like a week later, they've grown like two more feet. So it's, uh, you just keep going and going. And that's pretty much it with these tomato plants. I wanted to show you guys our peppers that we've been growing. Um, I'm really excited about these because peppers take forever. They, they bring in tons of aphids. We've been doing really, really well. That jadam that I talked about earlier has been my absolute best friend in this process. We spray three days a week. We use our Groking sprayer. If we're just doing target spraying, then I will bring the Chapin and we focus on the middle of these pepper plants here. That's really where the aphids like to sit. Then another product I just talked about was uh, Build a Soil Bloom product. I've been feeding those once every two weeks uh, once they started to have some flowers. So when I fed, the last time was two weeks ago and all these plants were below this trellis. I think they were about right here. It's an amazing amount of growth that I've got over the last three weeks. We have tons and tons of flowers. They're looking really beautiful. The bees are loving it. They're coming through and pollinating. And we have tons of peppers on our lower areas and they're starting to turn colors in the back. So people at the farmer's market, I have customers that just wait all season long for our lunchbox peppers. They're just the little colorful ones that you can snack on. Um, but again, like everything else, I, I really am proud to say that we get such great feedback on the flavor of everything that comes from our farm. And I really believe that's because of the way that we grow and the amount of care that we put into the product itself. So I'll give you guys a little update once we start harvesting. They're really beautiful. I know we've been out of touch and I really wanted to pop on here today and make a little video just to talk about some of the things, you know, show off the greenhouse a little bit. And, you know, I get a lot of questions about some of the products that we use. These products in particular, they work. And it's been a, a while since I've made a video. So I was really excited to do this today and get back on. And I'm sure as many of you know, if you have a greenhouse or maybe a market farm, it's a really tight budget that we're on. I don't get to just use tons and tons of products. So I definitely go with products that I don't have to use all the product at one time. And like I said, a lot of this has lasted me a really long time. We've worked really hard to build our soil. We like to not be spending thousands and thousands of dollars. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much for being here today. 
I was really happy to get to share the products, the greenhouse, give you a little update, show you my peppers. You can subscribe below, leave any comments and questions. I definitely love to read through the comments and questions. Stay tuned for the episode with Growing Organic. I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited to share with you how you can make one of my favorite products at home. I'm really, I have so many questions for him and I'll be excited to share that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.